I finally managed to read Trese. After watching the anime 2 years ago, I've always been meaning to read the actual comics. It just took me a while because everything I plan to watch or read always takes me a couple of years to actually do. Everything just rots in my to watch and to read list. I'm happy that I got to read it since it was worth reading. This is going to be my thoughts and opinions on the Trese comics. And don't worry, there's going to be no spoilers. But before that, for those of you that may not know what I'm talking about, Trese is a Filipino comic series written by Budget Tan and illustrated by Cajo Baldissimo. It tells the story of Alexandra Trese, a detective who deals with crimes of supernatural origin. Its first issue was published on October 22, 2005, starting off as a niche work which grew in popularity. Our main character, Alexandra Trese, is a club owner that occasionally works as a consultant for the police. Sounds familiar, I know. The series focuses on Philippine mythology and urban legends, showcasing the different monsters and magic that Philippine culture has to offer. I've only read up to volume 4, and I'd describe the series as a gritty, dark, noir type of comic, with a bit of horror. Each chapter, which are called cases, like actual detective cases, are structured wherein Alexandra Trese goes to a crime scene, gathers some clues and evidence, and eventually solves the case, all with a supernatural twist of course. The crime is caused by a supernatural creature and Alexandra solves the case with her supernatural allies and acquaintances. That's pretty much how most of the chapters are told. It's very episodic. There's really no overarching plotline. Personally, I don't like episodic series. I prefer there to be an overarching storyline with a main antagonist or conflict. I also binge watch and binge read everything I consume. And Trese is not the best for binge reading since it's episodic. I also feel like the earlier cases are way too fast paced. It doesn't give us enough background about the victim, the mythical creatures present, the motive, and the characters themselves. Everything just happens way too fast, and the case is solved earlier than you expected. But then there's Volume 3, Mass Murders, which out of all that I've read is the best volume. It finally has an overarching storyline with a main villain. It also sort of serves as an origin story for Alexandra, since in the first two volumes we're just thrown right out there in the middle of the action without any explanation, and caused a lot of questions for the readers. Volume 3 answers a lot of those questions, which revolve around Alexandra Trese, Anton Trese her father, and the Kambal, which are Alexandra's sidekicks in the series. The volume also managed to introduce a lot of brand new characters, like Alexandra's grandfather who finally made an appearance. He is always mentioned throughout other chapters, and there's her brothers. By introducing us to new characters, it adds to the world building of the series. Speaking of world building, that is one of the best things that the comic does. The series has excellent world building. Each case gives us different mythological monsters, and we see Alexandra go to actual places in Metro Manila. It's creative with how they incorporate the magical monsters with today's society. The Aswang, which are basically Filipino vampires, are gangs and are into drugs, human, and gun smuggling. Shanak are aborted and unwanted babies. The Duende helps people in gaining their desires with a certain price, which is chocolate, specifically chocolate. Encantos, Diwatas, and Elementals are also present. And you have fucking Mananangals with M16s, which is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. The series definitely has a lot of fictional and magical aspects, but it doesn't separate itself from reality. It makes it feel like the story could actually happen and are possible. It doesn't shy away from showing the not-so-good side of the Philippines. It shows the drug problem, gun violence, trafficking, murder, and the R-word that is present in the country. And I love that, it's not a magical fantasy Philippines that's all sunshines and rainbows. The comic gives us modern versions of childhood fairy tales and new stories with familiar creatures. It's sometimes advertised as a horror comic, but it's really not jumping out of your chair screaming scary. It just gives you this creepy, mysterious, and eerie vibe, which I like. Then there's the art and oh my god holy shit it's beautiful. The black and white definitely suits the theme of the series. The art will give you this gutsy, dreadful, and grim feeling. The monsters are drawn wonderfully. The ones that are supposed to be scary are scary. The ones that are supposed to be intimidating are intimidating. The ones that are supposed to be disturbing are disturbing. And the ones that are supposed to be beautiful are goddamn hot. Like who knew that something that has an ugly ass name like the Bangungot could be hot? Like I want one, yes please, who cares if I die? So yeah, this comic is definitely worth the read. I also recommend watching the anime. It's not 100% accurate to the comic, but it told the story of the earlier chapters a lot better in my opinion. If you want the full Filipino experience, you can watch it in Tagalog. Or if you're an absolute weeb, there's the Japanese dub. And the English dub is good too. All the dubs are good. Lastly, you can read Trese at Penlab. 
which also features other Filipino comics. I might read other Filipino comics in the future and make a video about them. So stay tuned by subscribing. That's pretty much it. See ya!